All right, guys, this is the final section of the series. Uh, if you've been reading each of my posts, you'll, you'll now have all the knowledge for creating live rounds. Uh, the main purpose for this section is to show you how quickly uh, creating live rounds can be accomplished by using my methods and tools. Uh, at this point, you should have all of your trim brass primed and in trays, uh, like I do, you can see here. Each one of those is uh, primed and trimmed. They are not filled with powder. Uh, finally, your press should be adjusted so the cartridge overall length uh, is, is set to the proper specification after seating a bullet. So if you're reloading for a magazine fed rifle like an AR-15, uh, like as I am, double check to make sure your cartridge overall length is short enough to fit in the magazine. So, in other words, you don't want to create all your rounds and then have them not fit in your magazine. So that's uh, that'd be bad. You'd have to uh, either feed them singly or rip all the bullets out and redo them all, or just see them go back through and reset your uh, die and seat them down further. Uh, before we start, I want to talk about another tool that you'll need, uh, which is really nice to have, called a, a case length headspace gauge. So this is shown, this is shown here. Um, I also have a picture of it on my webpage. It's basically a um, uh, piece of steel machined out to the exact specifications uh, of of the caliber that you're reloading. So in my case, it's, uh, this one's uh, 223. 223 Remington. <clears throat> so after you seed each bullet, it's a good idea uh, to measure to make sure your cartridge overall length uh, is correct, to make sure nothing, nothing on your die has been adjusted, to make sure that the pressures inside your chamber, chamber your rifle remain constant, consistent between each shot. So this affects accuracy, uh, and most importantly, uh, it's a safety measure. And you'll also want to, at, at this time, when you get done reloading, uh, or I'm sorry, seeing your bullet and throwing them in your headspace cage, this is a, this is basically the last time that you're going to have to visually inspect each cartridge to make sure there's no cracks in your brass. You, you know, I know you've done this other, I've recommended to do this in other parts of the uh, process, but this is the last chance, so you always want to make sure visually inspect every single one of them. Um, inst instead of using the calipers to measure every single uh, cartridge as you after you see your bullet, that's what this is. So you've already measured the case, and uh, what I do is every ten or so rounds, I throw them in my uh, calipers and make sure that the length is good but you can also throw them in here um, I, I guess this won't measure the overall length of the case but you'll be able to see uh, the overall length of the cartridge but you'll be able to see uh, if the brass is um, uh, trimmed to length and if it fits in here it'll fit in your rifle without jamming my the calipers I have set and locked to 2.252 inches. So that length for 223 Remington will fit in my magazine. Um, that's what I have it set for here. Uh, after every 10 or so rounds, I'll throw them in there to make sure that, it's, that it fits. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is this is machined to um, the Sporting Arms and a Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, which is abbreviated SAMI, S-A-A-M-I specs. So if the round is not in spec, it won't fit in this gauge, minus the cartridge overall length. The bullet, you'll see when you throw it in here, uh, the bullet will uh, stick out. Uh, let's see here. If you if it doesn't fit in here, you're gonna want to put it aside in a pile and fix it. So you're gonna want to 
remove the bullet, dump the powder out. Uh, when, as you look at the primer and you visually inspect it, if it's not seated all the way, you're going to want to deprime it or, and or um, uh, push, uh, use the press to seat the primer all the way. And if it doesn't fit in here, don't take shortcuts. Make sure that you fix the round so uh, you're not going to have chain ring problems. Um, you know, it's a it's a safety issue. So, so he, the straightforward process I'm going to go through here and show you. Um, basically, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here, uh, I'll explain it first. I have my powder measure set up, which I explained in a previous video. Uh, I have it set to 25.4 grains of Varget powder. So I'm using Varget powder. Um, again, don't use what I'm using. Check it in the Lyman book. This just happens to, in your Lyman hand loading uh, book. This formula that I'm using just happens to be in the Lyman hand loading book and it works out pretty good for me. So Varget powder. 24, 25.4 grains, which isn't the max load, it isn't the minimum load, it's right in between. And then, uh, I don't know offhand what the length of these are, uh, whatever it is, it's in a previous video um, when, I, when I trim these things. And for the uh, gauge here, what you do is, this is the round I already had set to prepare for this video, but you just throw it in there. Uh, it's good, probably not in focus, but it fits super flush. And you can see, if you look closely, the case will line up uh, with the top of this gauge. The bullet will protrude out. So if, if, it fit, if the round fits in this gauge, it will chamber in your rifle. And if the cartridge overall length fits in your measurement, which mine is 2.252, the maximum is 2.260, I believe. So it's less than that, and I don't know what the minimum is off the top of my head without looking at the book. If it fits in, if it fits in this uh, length, if it fits in the gauge, you're good to go. And like I said, I lock this so I don't have to keep this thing running the whole time. So let me do a few rounds here. I'll do about 10 or so, and then uh, you can kind of see the process. So in the lower right-hand corner of the video, you're going to see my little GoPro here set up on my powder measure, so you can kind of see how this works too. I'm going to dump this out. It already poured. It already dumped. So throw that on. It will dispense and hopefully hit right on 25.4 grains. If it's off a tenth of a grain, I won't, uh, I won't, I won't use it. I'll dump it back in and let it re-dispense just because I, I want some somewhat ac accurate rounds. So this one's on. Dump it in there, tap it a few times. Put that back on the tray. The good thing is that's measuring out the next charge while I'm seating the bullet. So throw it in, actually guide it up, seat it, take a look at it. Looks good. Primer looks good. Fits in the gauge. That looks good. I'm going to check this first one here. That's good. That's a good round. So, powder is dispensed at 25.4 grains. Go ahead and dump it on the next. I'm using 69 grain Sierra Match Kings. Looks good. 
chamber. And I'm not going to measure every one. I'm going to measure every, like I said, about every type one. So this particular low, this particular charge and uh, caliber, uh, it's pretty much impossible to double charge these. So double charging is putting two charges in one round, which is going to be really bad when you go to fire it. Uh, I I don't charge all these at once for that reason. I got in the habit of this total process that I'm showing you right now by, by charging one piece of brass at a time minimizes the chance that I will double charge. So when I do my, if I get in, I figured if I get in the habit of doing it, doing it this way, then when I reload, say my 38 special, which is, uh, would be really easy to double charge, I won't run into issues. See, this one's a little bit heavy, 25.7. So, what I'll try to do here is grab a couple of these grain kernels or granules, whatever the hell they're called, to get to 25.4. With these, usually one kernel is 25, or one tenth of a grain. So there you go, 25.4. Oops. No, I left a kernel in there. I don't got it. I dumped it in the brass and there was one kernel left in the tray. Sometimes the it's super hot out right now and it's humid. I'm sweating my ass off and the humidity is making them stick a little bit. 25.4. Put that in. This will be the last one I do. This is pretty repetitive. Probably pretty boring when you're watching it, but this is pretty much the process. And then I'll measure this one. This will be my eighth, eighth one. Once you get a system going, and you're not screwing around with cameras, and you got stuff in your way. You can get you can get going pretty quick. This one, oh, that was good. All right, so if you have any questions or anything on this series, uh, feel free to email me or post a comment in the YouTube videos or YouTube, uh, my YouTube videos. Uh, it's been quite a lot of work to put this together, so hopefully everybody enjoys it. And I think what I'm going to probably do next is probably start doing some product reviews, so maybe... Uh, do a little bit deeper dive into my uh, powder, my charge master here. Maybe get a, get my hands on a Hornady, Hornady uh, and compare the two. Maybe put them side by side and um, see which one's faster and all that. So, anyways, we will uh, um, try to get some of that stuff going. So, appreciate everybody watching and uh, happy reloading.